Some you heard from Dan Beyer as Devante KZ spent it for the rest of the year. The rest of the year for that hit on uh, Michael Pittman. And here's the problem with what we do as fans. I saw it. You guys see Tom Brady's Instagram post? Tom Brady basically critical of Gardner Minshew for throwing him into that spot. I, I get it. But KZ, hadn't he been penalized or fined like five or six times for similar types of hits? So this is like a Draymond Green type of thing, right? It's like this incident in and of itself may not be suspension worthy, but when you add to the fact that there's a bunch of different times in which we told you to hit people the right way, seeing what you hit, not just leading with your helmet, we're going to suspend you the rest of the season. And it sounds worse than it is because there's a couple games left, but it's not like there's 10 games left. You suspend 10 games left. So, and I, I love the, well, what is he supposed to do? Not kill a guy. That's, you know, like one of the things that we do, we're like so hypocritical of, so hypocritical of, is the NFL and how they're overly protective of quarterbacks. Oh, man. How is that pass interference? But then we watch these games this weekend with backup quarterbacks. You're like, yeesh. Man, we got to stop these guys from getting hurt. They're trying. You know? And with the helmet-to-helmet stuff, you know what they don't want? They don't want Ryan Shazier again. I mean, DeMar Hamlin is is like an act of God. I know, guy just said God doesn't care about football. But he gets hit in the one spot on your body where it could make your heart stop, and thankfully they saved his life. So the idea of doing your absolute best to make sure that no one dies, I think is a good thing from the NFL. Um, did you see these comments from Richard Mendenhall? Dan, do you, do you have those in front of you by any chance, Dan Beyer? I do have it now. Oh, you do? Go ahead. And I'm quoting. Yes. I'm quoting. This is not me. Oh, Quote. Yes. I'm sick of average white guys commenting on football. Y'all not even good at football. Can we please replace the Pro Bowl with an all-black versus all-white bowl so these cats can stop trying to teach me who's good at football? I'm better than your goat, end quote. I'm better than your goat. Well, first, it leads to a lot of Twitter funniness. Right? We'll play for you one, in fact, in a moment. But... Uh, who are the average white dudes who he's talking about commenting on football? Like the the one thing about football commentators by and large is they're all hall of famers. Greg Olson, the only one I believe who's not a hall of famer and probably not going to be, but was a very good tight end and is a very good color commentator. Uh, But I, I wasn't aware that race had anything to do with prerequisite for talking about football when you've been a great football player. There is a tweet that he sent an hour prior uh, in our previous to that tweet that says i don't understand hold on quote i don't understand how you can talk about tomlin's playoff record without acknowledging that kenny pickett has only played one year who was the quarterback for all those playoff losses literally all of them make up your minds how you arbitrarily separate mike and ben uh in the win loss column question mark so it seems like everything is reactionary towards the pittsburgh steelers Yes, in that it's Ben Roethlisberger was the reason that they were winning, and now that they're not, you know, Mike Tomlin Mike is Thomas, the problem. Yeah, I like. Look, it's pretty obvious they don't have a good quarterback. Mason Rudolph's a friend. I hope this is his probably his last shot with the Steelers. They've kept him around as a third string quarterback, right? And he'll get an opportunity this weekend. But like we've seen, even going back to when he last got an opportunity, there was a fall off, and they haven't been able to replace Big Ben. They're a they're a top twenty quarterback away from being an elite team. And look, do they have do they have a George Pickens problem? Absolutely. By now, I think most of you have seen the video of George Pickens not blocking, just kind of standing there watching his running back get tackled at like the two yard line. You guys, you guys all see that play? Yes. And it's like the second week in a row in which we've seen video of him quitting on his teammates. That was Deontay Johnson the week prior. Fair enough. Okay, but they got they got an issue there. 
But here's here's what happens. <laughs> like again, it doesn't make it okay. But the explanation is like when you don't have decent quarterback play, those guys are going to get pissed. Yes. And they're like, I ain't blocking for somebody if you can't throw me the football. Like that's the reality of it. Uh, honestly, like the, a little bit of it is. I saw there's some, here's where you expose yourself as somebody who doesn't understand human nature. When you're like, oh, oh, they got to be so mad in Buffalo that Josh Allen got a game ball. Like, dude, he got a game ball because he didn't lose the game. Do you hear Josh Allen's comments after the game? All-time great quote, right? He had 95 yards passing, completed seven passes. It's like, yeah, kind of like the guy who didn't do any work in the, in the group project and got an A. It's an amazing quote. But obviously, Sean McDermott's sitting there going like, hey, man, I got I got the guy. The quarterback's got to know I still got his back. We just didn't need him to win this game. So I'll give him the game ball. Why? Because he handed the ball off? Yeah, because he could have checked out any play. He could have said, ah, I'm Josh Allen. I want to throw the football. Like he did against the Jets, which cost them the game. So a lot of it is people don't understand the mentality of these guys. And, you know, if you want to say fragile eagles, egos, fine. They all have fragile egos. They're human beings. But as for Rashard Mendenhall, I, I like this idea, actually. I do. I think this is fun. Right? If we can if we can just have a little fun with it, maybe, would that be better? I kind of think it'd be really, really good. You know? So did you did you see this from um from uh, the kid uh, Gowie. This guy has 27,000 followers on, uh, on Twitter. And he posted this in response to Richard Mendenhall saying we should have an all white versus all black bowl game. Warning. This is your disclaimer to let you know that this is a racially driven conversation. So to all the people who don't see color or you, why you got to make everything about race? This video ain't for you, bro. So go ahead and keep scrolling because I ain't trying to hear none of that crying in my comments. Now, for those who can actually talk about race without being easily offended and have fun with it, let's talk about it, bro, because this is a good topic. Listen, Rashard Mendenhall tweeted that white people aren't good at football and to prove it, we should have a white versus black bowl. Now, as somebody who loves football, who loves to keep it real and also is not racist i think some of y'all got the white team up like hey listen let's call it what it is some of y'all got the white team up you mean to tell me if i could pick an all-white team of active players oh at quarterback i'm picking josh allen aka my white cam newton with better throwing mechanics i'm picking christian mccaffrey who i consider the best running back in football got the triple crown winner in cooper cup on the opposite side i got a legend in his own right in adam thielen and then at tight end i got travis kelsey arguably the greatest tight end of all time Listen, bro, don't even get me started on the offensive line. Now, when it comes to the all-white team, that secondary going to be some <laughs> But besides that, pass <laughs> rush, Max Crosby, the Bosa brothers, TJ Watt is really sick on that side, bro. Don't get it f***ed up. So I just want to say, to even things out, we got to put the biracial kids in the pool and let the teams draft. Because you can't just have Patrick Mahomes or Mike Evans. You got to draft them. So who do y'all think will win with these rules? That's amazing. Uh, that, that's actually having some fun with it. By the way, yeah, the white team would have to go by by biracial draft. Load up on defensive backfield. Jason Seahorn was trending, yeah, and and there was, (laughs) and this was the reason why someone pointed out on Twitter. Yeah, Adam Thielen would not make the cut. He's not what he used to be. (laughs) Oh no, there was a point in the fantasy season where he had some value, but yeah, to to say he is your WR two isn't. Is that that strong? Yeah, correct. Solid and slot wide receivers, and then uh, do we get did Camberios return kicks and punts? Can we can we do that? Yeah, that, that <laughs> yes. works for us. That yeah. works. That works. Um, uh, that's actually a fun conversation. Mendenhall sounds like a complete moron for what he's talking about. Like, again, you're gonna have to tell me who it is to tell me that white guys can't commentate on football or black guys can't. Like, what what? I, that one I'm, yeah. So again, like I look at the the Fox NFL, the, the Fox uh, set. Uh, those are all Hall of Famers, are they not? Everyone that said a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Okay. So who 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 is he talking about? It has to be a local Pittsburgh thing, right? <laughs> has to be. Has to be. And that that's the problem right. with social media. You only have a limited number of characters, and if you don't label who you're talking about, but he that's also yeah. the problem with saying all. 
Right? He made it like all. Well, it's also too right now. Pittsburgh's the only one who actually cares about the Steelers because everybody's written them off for how bad the quarterback play and their team has played as of late. That's also fair. 